Moment of truth. Will she scoon? Power. Power. Power button. Why make the big button the power button when you can make the little tiny button the power button, eh? Now. Things are waking up. <gasps> Yes, not the English. Okay, well, I am ready to rock. Fantastic. Hey folks, okay, this is gonna be our May blog. Uh, May vlog, vlog, vlog. So this last week, I've been playing around making these little guys. These are, this is a, a comatic. So that's basically, it's a dog sled. They're the pickup truck of the tundra. So I made a, a bunch of these at scale, and that'll be the next video that comes out. They're weird, and, and I mean, it's just, it was a fun little project. Somebody suggested I make it after they saw the model kayak that I was making in the last vlog. When the guy saw my Greenland kayak that I was building, he said, let's, uh, how about you make a dog sled? So I thought, that's fun, let's do that. So I'm making a whole bunch, and uh, there's gonna be a little bit of a giveaway um, as part of this little build, and so you'll just have to watch the Comatic episode for that, but I just thought I'd give you a sort of a, a heads up. Greenland kayak is skinned. We're going to get some dye on it and get the coating on that real soon. But the main thing I wanted to do is open this. So uh, this was sent to me by Mike Garnum. Um, I do believe Mike dropped me a note saying he's sending me something and I have no idea what it is. And thank you very much, Mike, in advance. But let's... Uh, Let's do one of those unboxings. Very mysterious. The tag just says woodworking tool. So let's see. <laughs> Very cool. Black. What are these made out of? Is this ebony? No. Can't be ebony. Black wood shavings. Oh. Oh, nice. It's a marking gauge. Oh, so look at this. Get in the picture. Stuck my logo on it. That is very sweet, Mike. Holy smokes. Note. Just have a look at the note here. Hi, Mark. This is a little something you made. Uh, for you as a way of saying thank you for all the brilliant YouTube videos you put on. It's made of bog oak. Oh, cool. I've heard of bog oak. Never seen it. That is so, I love the color. That is fantastic. It's made of bog oak from Norfolk, a little uh, north of me in the UK. This is some of the rarest timber on the planet. I'm lucky enough to have a ton, of, over a ton of it. Wow. You can never have too many gauges. This twist type is my own design slash invention. Please don't give away the secret. A friend did the engraving on his homemade CNC working from my CAD drawing of your logo. Pretty as it is, this is a working tool. Use it as, use it, abuse it, and wear it out. Uh oh, fire alarm going off. Disaster narrowly avoided there. <laughs> Forgot I put the stove on right before getting excited about the package. Anyhow, uh, back to Mike's very generous gift. Um, so he says this bog oak is uh, possibly somewhere between 3,000 to 10,000 years old. That is incredible. This thing's heavy. I God, I love this color. Okay, so there is a mechanism here which I'm not allowed to give away. Very nice. Very, very nice. Well, uh, Mike, thank you ever so much. That's super generous. Um, I love it. I will definitely use this thing. I will abuse this thing. And uh, that's very cool. <laughs> you know, and, and almost the cool, the coolest thing is just the fact that it's made out of the bog oak because uh, I love stuff like this. It's, it's, it's very nice. I'm not, even, I'm not gonna try and take this thing apart because I don't wanna wreck it. Another little bit of mailbag. Hey, 
cautionary tale. Okay, so I picked up one of these Shapton stones a while back. Um, 16,000 grit. So these are, uh, these are a ceramic stone bonded to a piece of glass to help keep it really flat. You use water to uh, lubricate them. Okay, so I've been using water stones for almost my entire woodworking career. Um, and I have had the same set of water stones ever since I got started. They're still lasting a long, long time. And they have had them in a pond of water the entire life of the stones, which is going on like 30 years now. Not a problem. Constant immersion, not a problem. I get this Shapton stone. It's ceramic, right? What do we use ceramics for? We use them in really wet locations. Okay, so I go ahead and I blissfully start using this stone and I notice that it's sort of the thing about water stones is when they aren't like fully saturated, they tend to they tend to glaze up a little bit quickly. So as I'm using this thing, I gave it a white a wet down. And I start sharpening with it, and I'm like, okay, this is nice, but it's kind of glazing up a little bit quickly. So I figure, just like any other water stone, I'm just going to put it in my pond. I put it in the pond, and I didn't fully immerse it. I guess I was busy, or somebody distracted me, but I dropped it into the pond, and like. Half of it was in the water and the other half was sticking out. Forgot all about it. And then life took over and it was a while before I came back to do any sharpening. I just wasn't doing much woodworking at that moment. I come back to do some sharpening, right? I see my water stone or my, my Shapton stone sitting in the pond. I pull it out and I look at it and I go, that's funny. And you can see everywhere that the stone was immersed has swollen up a little bit. And I don't mean, I mean, it's swollen up like, I would, I want to say like a 32nd of an inch or something like that. And it feels real chalky and porous in that area. And the bit that was not immersed was fine. And I'm like, what the hell? And then I find the instruction sheet written in this microscopic freaking tack font, which if I don't have glasses on, I cannot read it at all. And that's where it says, do not leave stone in the water. Do not leave stone in water. Doing so may damage the stone. To use a stone, just splash water on as needed. When dropping 175 bucks on one stone that can get damaged by the very material that I need to use in order to use the stone. Do you think you could just like print it a little bit bolder like on your nice little slicko packaging? I don't need it on the front. The back would be fine. Just maybe some bright red letters that say do not leave soaking in water. Luckily, Lee Valley had my back. I caught it within their return window. I explained to them what happened. I was very honest about it. I said, I screwed up. But they were very kindly said, no problem. I'll give you a new one. So thank you very much to Lee Valley. Um, I have, I've, I use, full confession, I worked for Lee Valley for a little while. Uh, I don't plug them because of that. I worked for them because they make good stuff. And uh, I thought it'd be interesting. I thought it would be a good learning opportunity. And it certainly was. You know, I got to know a lot of the products better than if I hadn't worked for them. I didn't work for them for very long, six months or something. I've never worked for anybody for very long. But um, anyway, I worked there for a bit and then I spent most of my paychecks on tools and then eventually I moved on, actually I moved on to boat, building boats after that or, or moved on to building boats full time. Anyhow, the Shapton stones, though, are super nice. Now, it was Rob Cosman that sort of turned me on to using these. He has his, that very specific sharpening technique in which he uses like a little, uh, you know, I call it the Cosman technique. He attributes it to a different guy, but since I always, I learned it from Cosman myself, I attribute it to him. So it involves using a little ruler on one side of your stone, and then you take your, your plane blade and you, you back you bevel the back of it a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit and it takes off the burr. 
and makes it very sharp very quickly. And so I wanted to sort of up my sharpening game in certain areas or for the purposes of doing luthier work. And so I decided I would get one of those stones and uh, try out using his technique. So um, that's what I did. That's why I picked it up. Anyhow, I've had a hard time getting into making videos lately. It's been I don't know, just stuff going on around the house, just not really spending time in the shop a lot. Just, I need a break, you know, need a big break. I've been working on this kayak here, the Greenland kayak. Um, so we've got it just about finished now. Got a little bit more work to do on it. Basically just some deck lines is about it. And then it's ready to go out the door and we'll do a video on that. It won't be a super in-depth video though, because yeah, just because it won't, all right? Um, that's it for this vlog. Real short one, real short one. I don't know what I'm going to do next. I got some oars to leather. I might do a little video on that. Will that interest you? Let me know. All right, ciao for now, folks.